I'm Kelly Vaughn and welcome to Inside Indy. And I know you're thinking, okay, I see Christmas trees next to Kelly. It's just still a couple of months off from the holiday season, but you know, it's never too early to start because if you go into the stores in central Indiana, they have the Christmas stuff out. And we have the Christmas stuff out here in the studio and here to tell us why we have these trees here, it's Michelle Shuffett. And you are a board member for the Warren Arts and Education Foundation here in Indianapolis. Welcome. Thank you, Kelly. To Inside Indy. You come bearing gifts, Christmas trees. What's going on in this early in the season? So I am here to talk about uh, the Warren Arts and Education Foundation in uh, the Warren Township School District is hosting its 30th annual uh, Tree Fest. Ah, nice. um, the theme this year is Christmas Jubilee. Um, the events are held in November for a week-long celebration, getting us into the, the holiday spirit, getting into the uh, Christmas season. Okay, okay. Now, tell us a little bit about the trees that you have you brought today, and who decorates the trees for the uh, Tree Fest? So uh, we have professional decorators, and then we have amateur decorators. I actually got involved in Tree Fest as a parent volunteer at my girls' elementary school. Uh, I decorated a tree to be presented at Tree Fest, actually won first in amateur show really? uh, that year. So uh, yeah, the trees are, are decorated and then sold to the public um, to raise money for the foundation. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, so this particular one, the theme is, like, it looks like you got a lot of uh, little, what are these? Little penguins, Pe maybe. Penguins, okay. So maybe, uh, maybe it's thing. cold outside. Okay, okay. I like that. I'm like, very cute, though. Yes, okay. Okay. yes. And then this one here, we're just going with the Christmas traditional yes. bulbs and all this little curly dooly stuff here. Yeah, they uh, come in all shapes and sizes, different colors, different themes. Uh, we have small trees such as this for a tabletop, all the way up to a seven and a half foot tree. Oh, wow. Okay, so there will be small, medium, and large trees. Oh, man. That is okay. correct. The okay. short ones, four and a half foot, six foot, and seven and a half foot. Okay, okay. So now you have the big tree fest. And again, let's go over the dates and times for that for people to come and see the display of trees that uh, you'll have on hand. Sure. So the festivities kick off on Friday, November 16th. Um, our first uh, entertainment will be the Ball State University Singers that Friday night. Oh, nice. uh, on, and then it runs Friday through the next Tuesday. Uh, Saturday, you can come in and take a look at all of the Christmas trees. You can shop in our Christmas gift shop. On Sunday, we'll have some dance um, studios, dance clubs in to provide entertainment. On um, Monday evenings, we'll have our township choirs from elementary, middle school, and high school. And then on uh, Tuesday, it closes up with a gospel night uh, featuring Allison Spear and Doug Anderson to entertain. Nice. Okay. So it's not just like a one day event and for the time that the trees are on display, there's something practically going on every evening that uh, people can come and, and uh, enjoy the entertainment as well as the trees. That is correct. It's nice. held in the performing arts center on the high school campus of Warren central. And, um, yeah, there's entertainment all week long. We also have a Santa breakfast for smaller kids on Saturday morning. Oh. <clears throat> and we also have a dinner um, with a silent and live auction Saturday mm -hmm. evening. Now, the dinner is held at the Community Service Center um, on the Flanner and Buchanan um, area there on East Washington Street. Yeah, lovely place. I yeah. Mean, you wouldn't so. think about, you know, funeral facility, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It is. What they do there. So um, now you mentioned the Santa breakfast for kids. So what will happen that morning? So basically it's a craft. It's a visit from Mr. and Mrs. Claus and there will be some singing. So it's entertainment and focused on some of our younger kids in the township. Okay. Okay. And then of course breakfast. Yum. Yes, breakfast. Yum. And then the dinner that evening, what can people expect? That is uh, a semi-formal evening. Uh, there's a dinner. Um, we'll have silent auction items going on during the dinner and then after the dinner there'll be a live auction event we um, get several things donated from the community the Indianapolis Colts the Fever the Pacers the Indians the Indianapolis Motor Speedway they support our community send things in that we can auction off okay very good okay wow nice nice prizes there yes. that, that people can uh, win so tell us a little bit about um, the Warren um, Foundation for sure. schools. 
So the Warren and Arts and Education Foundation is a, uh, we're run by volunteers. We have an executive board. Um, basically it's there to support the arts within our township. So we raise money. Um, recently they did a big project. They uh, put all new seating in the lower level of our performing arts center at the high school. Nice. We give away um, thousands of dollars to the community, whether it's um, arts teachers, choir teachers, theater teachers, um, via grants. They request money from the foundation for different projects going on related to the arts that are funded by the foundation. Wow. And I know um, you have a very, very famous graduate of Warren Central High School, I understand. Uh, Ryan Murphy? Ryan Murphy? Yeah. We have several. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's the biggest Hollywood director yes, right now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, does the school acknowledge that? How do you, how do you process that? And does, uh, do you ever hear from him? I personally have, have not heard from him, and I, I am new to the board, so okay. if he is supporting the board, I, I don't know um, about that. But there is a wall of fame at the high school um, where graduates who have made a difference in the community or have been successful at various things are um, on display with bio information. Nice. Yes. Okay. okay. And, and I don't mean to belittle what they do, but he just won like eight Emmys or something. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's kind of, and I just never hear m much about him. And I thought maybe he's doing some things there for the school and behind the scenes. And I just thought he's such a, uh, especially when it comes to performing arts, that's yeah. where you guys are so strong, where your strength is too. Yeah. We do have a strong alumni presence. And I will say that the majority of the time, our, our alumni do give back, so it wouldn't surprise me if he was Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, well, let's go over again the dates and times for the 30th Annual Holiday Tree Fest um, at Warren Performing Arts Center. Yes, so the festivities kick off on Friday, November 16th with the Ball State University Singers. We then have activities um, through the weekend up into uh, Tuesday when we close with our Gospel Night. Uh, more information can be found at uh, warrenfoundation.org. You can get information on the timeline and the cost of tickets to attend. Okay. Um, general admission is $5 just to come in and see the festivities. When we have the Ball State Singers and the Gospel Night, there is a little bit difference in the pricing to actually to view those shows. But um, $4 for general admission, discounts for seniors and students, five and under are free. Okay, cool. Okay, so just a great way to kind of get in the mood for the holidays and to help a wor wor very worthy cause and, and support um, Warren Township Schools. That is correct. Sounds like a winner to me. All right. Well, thank you so much. We've been talking to Michelle Shuffett, who is the, uh, the board member for the Warren Arts and Education Foundation. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. On Inside Indy. And we'll be back with more here on Inside Indy after this. And we're back here on Inside Indy, and uh, we're going to take a little trip on the show this evening. Um, we're going to a place north of Indianapolis, Hamilton County. I know you're thinking, ah, we were thinking Canada, but there's a <laughs> lot going on in Hamilton County. And here to tell us about all those wonderful things we can do, it's Whitney Riggs. Hi. Hi, Whitney. Thank you for having me. Whitney is the communications coordinator for Hamilton County Tourism. Uh, and you're gonna take us on a tour of sorts of Hamilton County. But yeah. before you do, yeah. tell people what the Hamilton County Tourism uh, Agency is about. Sure. And all that you do. Sure. Um, it's hard to uh, say everything we do in, in one segment, but um, as far as my job goes, I try to um, help promote uh, events and attractions in uh, local businesses in Hamilton County. Um, our main goal is to bring visitors to Hamilton County, whether that's from Indianapolis. Um, some of our target markets are Chicago, Cincinnati, Louisville. Um, so our goal is to try and get that word out, whether it's through publications, through radio, um, through social media, um, just talking about all the different things happening in Hamilton County. 
County. Um, and, and it's really great because we get to help lift up some of the local businesses who maybe don't have a marketing team um, who need that extra boost. So okay. it's, it's really great. So what do you say to the people in Chicago oh, and yeah. in St. Louis? Yeah. What are you telling them to, to compel them to come to Hamilton County, Indiana. Sure. Um, well, it really helps that we're right near Indianapolis. So um, we have that market where people are coming down for maybe the 500 or different events going on there. But then they come and take a day trip to Hamilton County and maybe try a restaurant or go to Connor Prairie. Things that you can do outside of the city that um, uh, big cities don't have. So for Chicago, we're about three hours away. Um, and so, you know, if you want to get out of the big city life and maybe go to Straw Town Katewe Park and go hiking, or like I said, Connor Prairie, um, drop the arts and design district and not have all the traffic. Um, so yeah, we're really pitching those types of things, those big cities. Okay. Yeah. Now, when I think about people who live in Indiana, I suspect you don't mind them making a stop in, for sure. in Hamilton County yeah, as well. So for definitely. those people who are looking to come to the area mm -hmm. uh, for perhaps a staycation? Yes. Uh, close to home? Yeah, and we get questions like that a lot. Um, we really try to promote to locals as well because um, they're the ones who are telling their um, great aunt from whatever city that's coming in town what she should do that weekend. So we want the locals and the community to know too what's going on. So um, a, a, great, a great avenue is obviously our website. Um, following us on Facebook is a great way to follow um, some of the events that are coming up. Um, so yeah, we want the locals to know what's going on so they can then also report it to all their friends and family as well. Okay, so let's take that tour yeah. uh, through Hamilton County and, and some of the best kept secrets. Sure. Um, okay, so I have my personal favorites. Um, Lisa's Pie Shop is, is a big one. Lisa's? Um, Lisa's Pie Shop, pie yeah. Pie Shop. I, it's, now, I'm up here because our television station yeah. is in Hamilton County, but yeah. I, I had not heard of that. Yeah, okay. it's, so it's just in the tip of Atlanta. Um, and it's just this adorable little pie shop that um, you walk in and you hope that heaven smells that way. Um, it's just this amazing, <laughs> amazing bakery. Uh, the owner is this lovely lady uh, named Lisa. Um, so that's one of my favorites as far as kind of getting out of the city and trying a different local business. Um, I think um, a really cute place that many people don't think of is the Museum of Miniature Houses in Carmel. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little museum in the Arts District. Um, it's a great place to take kids, to bring your family. The smallest things you can think of are in this place. Um, and you kind of just walk around with your jaw dropped, wondering how people made things so small. Um, yeah. So those are a couple of them. Yeah, it sounds like something in a movie or something. Yeah. Or something I've seen before. That's right. interesting. Right, okay. right. There's only a few of them in the U.S., so it's, it's an interesting, ah. interesting take. Um, but, you know, right now we have some really cool restaurants opening in Hamilton County. Mm -hmm. um, just recently, Field Brewing opened in Westfield. Um, some of these new restaurants are really putting Hamilton County on the map. Um, and Field Brewing is one of them. Um, Real Epicurean opened a few years ago in Westfield, a uh, farm to table restaurant. And Field Brewing is another one that's open that's, um, they have a really cool chef. Um, they're gonna do dinner, lunch. Uh, like I said, it's a local brewery, distillery. Okay. Eventually they're gonna have coffee and breakfast. So I think some of these different places are starting to put Hamilton County on the map as far as the food scene, this which is, is really New exciting. Orleans type restaurant in, in Noblesville. I'm trying to think of the name. In Noblesville. I do know that there's mud bugs in Carmel. Okay. Okay. This is up in Noblesville. I can't think of the name of it. It'll okay. come to me later. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So some other things. Now, of course, let's talk about the cities involved in Hamilton sure. County. Yeah. We need to cover that. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I think some people forget what cities encompass uh, Hamilton County, and that's Westfield, Carmel, Fishers, and Noblesville. And of course, we have the, the little towns too, Cicero, Atlanta, Sheridan, Arcadia. Um, so yeah, that's all in Hamilton County. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, I would think there's an increase in shopping with Ikea. What's going on with Ikea and its, yeah. its uh, arrival in Hamilton County? Yeah, and in Indiana. Um, so it's, it's been really exciting. It's really put Fishers on the map as far as shopping. Um, you know, and it's right by Portillo's and Top Golf. So you have this whole little um, area of attractions for things to do. So um, yeah, Ikea. And then we have all these different other local shopping spots too. Um, Clay Terrace in Carmel, the Hamilton Town Center in Noblesville, uh, the Arts District and I love the Noblesville Square. Uh, mm. It's a great place to walk around a courthouse scene, you get some breakfast, you have all these local shops that are just amazing. So it's, I think Hamilton County is, is underrated as far as shopping goes. It's a great place. Okay. okay. Now, annual events that happen. Yeah. Highlight some of those, the things that people could attend as far Definitely. as a part of their 
staycation. Yeah, definitely. So one that's coming up that's one of my favorites because I used to live near it and it's a very magical place is the Chris Kindle Mart. Um, it's the German authentic market in Carmel. It's going to be the second year for it this year. Um, and I believe it opens mid-November and it goes through Christmas. Um, so if you want to ice skate, uh, try some German food, go shopping, um, you know, wear your winter coat and have it snow and drink some wine, um, mm -hmm. it's a great place to go. So that's definitely an annual event that I hope for years to come is around. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any others? Yeah, definitely. So um, this one is actually new this year, uh, the Nickel Plate Express train. Um, it just opened in September. So it's the train that goes from Atlanta to Noblesville. Um, and right now they have some really cool programming. Um, the Pumpkin Express is going on currently. The Ghost Express starts this weekend. Um, and that's an adult only themed train where you can uh, take the train into the dark and there's all kinds of creepy ghost type things going on. And they stop at the Rhodes Hotel in Atlanta, which is supposed to be haunted with some paranormal um, mm -hmm. activities going on. So that's a really exciting time. And I know that programming is going to be a yearly thing. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, one of my favorite things to do uh, in Hamilton County, other than, you know, than coming to Channel 40 to work every day. <laughs> of course. <laughs> which is, by the way, a big drive from where I live on the northwest yeah. side of India. Yeah. Uh, I love Carmel Fest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, Carmel Fest is good. Um, I just recently went to the uh, Carmel International Arts Festival for the first time. Mm, okay. um, it was amazing. So it was all these local artists in the arts district. Um, they had the Fred Astaire uh, dance group there um, teaching little lessons. I did a little, like, swing lesson. Um, so yeah, some of these yearly festivals, they're all on our website. Um, we always update our calendar. Um, and it's a great way to see some of those events that are happening every year. Okay. Now, is there anything that's coming to Hamilton County in the future that we don't know about? Some things we can expect in terms of growth in the area? Yeah, I think I think particularly the restaurants, um, like I mentioned before, it's really putting Hamilton County on the map. Um, I know Big Woods Brewing is gonna be opening in Westfield, I believe next year. Um, they already have a presence in Indianapolis and I believe in Brown County. Um, like I said, Field Brewing just opened. We're excited about Cake Bake shopping cake bake shop opening in Carmel. Cake bake shop. Cake bake shop, which they right now have a presence in Broad Ripple. It'll be their second location and it's magical. Oh, is that the shop where you walk in and it's all the beautiful oh, flowers and like- Everything's it's, pink. Yeah, and yeah, it's Oprah's, yeah. she's like, it's Oprah Winfrey's yes. favorite place. I yeah, think you're kidding. Yeah, yeah they've made was... Oprah's top list for yeah, some of their yeah, cakes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's opening next year. Um, there's a couple different breweries open in Noblesville, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I think all the restaurants is an exciting time for us. Okay, okay. Yeah. And structurally, I mean, any buildings, anything, do you know if anything else is is? Yeah, is so I know there's soon? a few hotels opening next year, oh, really? um, which okay. is always an exciting time, um, especially, I think there's one in Westfield, I think there's maybe one in Fishers. Um, I know in a couple years out, there's gonna be the new boutique hotel opening in Carmel, that'll be right in the city center. Um, and that's gonna be a really, really cool venture for us. Um, it's gonna be kind of, uh, I think it's gonna be called the Carmichael, um, and it will have sort of a music theme to it. So that's a really exciting thing. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very good, very good. Well, we appreciate you coming in. Yeah, and thanks for having me. giving us the tour of Hamilton County. And let's go over again where people can find you if they're um, looking to do something yeah. uh, on the, uh, which would be north, Hamilton County is north yeah. of, of Indianapolis. Yeah, so you can go to visithamiltoncounty.com. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, we're on LinkedIn and Twitter. Okay. Okay, we yeah. appreciate it so much. Yeah, thank uh, you. Whitney Riggs, who was the communications, co I can't read this because <laughs> I can't see. I don't have my readers on. Uh, <laughs> communications coordinator for Hamilton County Tourism. Thank you thank so you. much for joining us on Inside Indy. And thank you for joining us. I'm Kelly Vaughn. We'll see you next time, maybe up in Hamilton County. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> we'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Be aware, fire can happen anywhere, aims to educate about essential steps to reduce the likelihood of having a fire and how to escape safely in the event of a fire. Joining us today with important fire safety tips is Lisa Braxton, Public Education Manager for the National Fire Protection Association. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Kelly. How are you doing? Tell me, why did you choose Be Aware Fire Can Happen Anywhere as your theme this year? We chose that theme because homes are not built like they used to be. They use modern construction that often has synthetic fibers. And if that catches on fire, that can cause a fire that can move fast and produces hot, toxic smoke that makes it hard to breathe. We tell people these days that you could have under two minutes to escape safely once your smoke alarm sounds. For many of us, home is our sanctuary, it's our safe place to be. We couldn't imagine having a fire in our homes, but that's actually the place of highest risk of fire. That's why we say, look, listen, learn. Be aware, fire can happen anywhere. Look for places fire can start, listen for the sound of the smoke alarm, and learn two ways out of every room. What do you suggest viewers do to reduce fire hazards in the home? We advise that people become detectives of their own house. Inspect your home for fire hazards. Look at your kitchen, for instance. Look at your stove top. Make sure that you don't have anything that can burn on your stove top. Any packaging from food, the pot holders. When you're cooking, make sure that you're not wearing loose sleeves that could catch onto the burner. Sometimes curtains can be too long and too close to the burners. Make sure that those things are away from your stove. And also, there are a number of individuals who enjoy the candles. They, uh, they smell nice, they, they add ambience to the home, but they can be a fire hazard. Consider using the battery-operated candles that can smell and look like real candles. And also, check the appliances. There are times when, after a while, the cords on appliances become frayed. That can be an issue. We don't want to have electrical fires because of the, uh, the cords becoming frayed. Make sure they're not running underneath furniture or under the wheels of a chair that's moving and that sort of thing. And if you have anybody in the household who smokes, make sure they smoke outside using a dip, deep dish ashtray and put the cigarette butts out using water in a pan, in a pot, or using sand. So those are ways you can go around your house and inspect and be your own detective and your own advocate for safety around your home. What are the essential three L's of fire prevention and safety? Look, listen, learn, be aware, fire can happen anywhere. Look for places fire can start, listen for the sound of the smoke alarm, and learn two ways out of every room. Lisa, what is the first thing one should do to escape a home fire? Well, the first thing is to plan before a fire takes place. You want to go ahead and plan that so you're not having to frantically think in a crisis what you're going to do. So we tell people to plan your escape plan. Go ahead and draw a map of your home, showing all the doors and windows, all the rooms, point arrows, put arrows for the exits, and mark your safe meeting place, safe meeting place outdoors. Then have a test. Do a fire drill like we have school fire drills. Do a home fire drill. Go ahead and have somebody hit the test button on the smoke alarm. Then everybody knows what it sounds like once they've heard that. And then everyone should walk outside to the safe meeting place and not, not go back inside. And if there's a real emergency, call 911 from your cell phone or from a neighbor's phone. Is there a website you can refer our viewers to where they can get more information? Yes, firepreventionweek.org has all kinds of great information you can use to um, download apps, there are videos, safety tip sheets. Our main website is nfpa.org and that has all, this, all that information as well. Thank you so much, Lisa, for those fire tips. Thank you.